Hey, hi, I'm Marissa Duyaradia, and this is our first episode of Touch of Magic. So Touch of Magic is a collaborative project um, with me and a bunch of the coolest people that I know who are involved in metaphysics, witchcraft, the occult, and uh, have information on a varying level of topics. And what we're going to try to do is come to you each week with some of these interesting topics and bring the co-hosts on. This week, I thought it would be really cool to talk about magic because it's touch of magic and a little bit about being a witch in Vegas and spirituality in Vegas. So let me introduce you now to my co-hosts. Um, we have Zach. Say hey, Zach. Hello, everyone. I'm Zach. I'm a high priest and Reiki master teacher, and I was practicing in Las Vegas for about five years. And just recently moved to California. Okay. Really excited to have Zach on board. He's uh, an expert on crystals and uh, various other uh, topics. He's a Reiki practitioner and a high priest, and he's amazing. So we're really excited to have him with us. And Sky. Hi, Sky. How are you? Hey, hi everyone. Um, my name is Sky. I'm from Star Size Mystical, and I obviously live in Las Vegas. I'm an eclectic witch and psychic medium. Okay, right on. And we have Miranda. Miranda, my favorite little witchy. <laughs> my favorite Hello. little skeptical witchy. She is yes. a voice of skepticism. <laughs> yes, I am Malak. Um, I guess you could say my background is a little bit in everything because I'm still trying to like find my own spiritual path. I'm still learning. But like she said, I am am very skeptical about a lot of things. So I will have a lot of questions. So I'm sorry if I annoy everybody with all my questions, but I, I got a lot of them. Questions are great. I'm excited <laughs> to have somebody who's questioning everything. I think anybody who's just blindly believing stuff or not asking questions about it are not doing themselves any favors. I think yeah. the more questions, then you get answers and then you can figure out where, you know, where you stand on a topic. So anyway, so I'm excited to have mm -hmm. everybody here and also check out some of the videos on the YouTube channel that these amazing uh, hosts have put up. Um, and there should be a different segment each week for each of these hosts on the varying topics that they feel like they want to talk about. So, you know, I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about like spirituality in Vegas because a lot of people, you know, they see Vegas as this big gambling and hookers and drugs and getting drunk. And that's what they see Vegas as. But there's actually, you know, if you see how big this entire town is, that's only one block or two blocks of play, uh, area in this place. The rest of this place is a beautiful suburban kind of environment for a lot of people. People call this home. And if you're at a place where people are at home, of course, you're going to find people who are feeling spiritual and having connections with the nature around them. And it may not be your typical nature because we're in a desert, but it's definitely nature and it's a, and it's something to experience. It's a nature so, when you see the tumbleweed. Ah, there's nature. <laughs> there's nature, absolutely. You know what though? I think cactuses and scorpions and Joshua trees and all the kinds of things that you find in the desert are absolutely beautiful. And there's something about Vegas. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they're they're either running here to try to fulfill a dream or they're running away from something from somewhere else to try to make something happen for themselves right um but the beautiful thing about this place is if you allow the energy of this place to really uh, connect with you i have experienced that it really burns away the the sun the environment it burns away the the things mm -hmm. that are no longer serving you in your life if you allow that energy to really permeate what you're doing, right? It strips everything down to its barest form. Even the ground itself here is so inhospitable. It's so naughty. You can't grow things here, but if you really, you put that effort into you, beautiful things can grow in this place. And, the, and we've got so many different cultural influences. Have you guys noticed that? The different cultural influences in the spirituality here? Definitely, how we have people from all over the world, not even just America, that bring different influences, I think it's actually quite amazing yeah actually it wasn't until i found this group that i thought vegas was either you believed in nothing or it was just modern like christian or jewish or you know anything like that so i was like i was actually surprised when i found out that uh vegas has a lot of like different religions and spiritual paths 
Absolutely, yeah. There was, um, I worked at Enchanted Forest Reiki Center off Sahara and Jones, and we would have teachers that would come in from all over the world. And I noticed that the more that I connected with the local people, the more I would find out, oh, there's like two or three different Buddhist temples around town, and you can go and walk through the gardens and meditate with the monks, and then there's like all these other different traditions, and it's just kind of scattered throughout. And once you start to talk to people about, you know, what you've been practicing and what you've been studying, it's like they start to open up about their own paths, and you really start to kind of unlock all of those little spiritual little niches in Las Vegas. It's really interesting. Yeah. I did notice people were really closed off here when I came because I moved from New York. And New York, I mean, you know, it's one of the most diverse places, even though Vegas, I think, is really more diverse in a lot of ways because of the you've got such a cross section of people from so many different places in one place. In New York, it's kind of scattered around. Anyway, I'm digressing. But but I, I noticed that people are like really closed off about they were really afraid to talk about if they had an alternative path. And I found out this has something to do with something called a right to work state. Like that people can mm. fire you for anything. Mm -hmm. And that people for any were literally, reason, yeah. yeah. That people were literally afraid to say that they were pagan. Like they didn't want photographs at the <laughs> pagan pride. And you know, people think of Vegas as this wild place, but it's really very heavily influenced by Christianity and Mormonism, especially. And I think people don't realize that. And they also don't well, we realize- We have a couple mega churches here. Yeah. And that's... Oh yeah, the born again ones. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. I've, I didn't There's know. that central Christian church and it's like thousands upon thousands of people go there every week. And it's, it's highly Christian here, surprisingly, right. even though it's Sin City. <laughs> well, yeah, I've been mean, driving down the block and it's like, Jesus will save you. And I'm like, really, Willie? <laughs> when, when's that going to happen? <laughs> yeah, we literally have a billboard that said Jesus will save you in Sin City. Like, come on now. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's ridiculous. I think that might be Isn't part of the reason, though, why they focus so much here, because they see us as a this sinful place that maybe they were trying to actually because in their you know their viewpoint they are saving us so they're trying to to do that but that might be the reason why we have so many churches here is because they're trying to focus on a place that they think are the most sinners so maybe yeah i had heard something that there was the most churches per square mile in vegas at one point as anywhere in the country which was completely bizarro but yeah, <laughs> so you have the most casinos and the most churches in the same place. Well, that's Vegas for you, right? So yeah, I, you know, I thought it would be cool to talk about a little bit of that energy because I don't think people really get that they're like people live here. They come here on vacation like, woohoo, Vegas. And they're like, you know, ready to party it up, gamble, eat. They want to, you know, they want to get crazy and they don't even realize like people live here. This is our lives. We're, we're here and there are people here from all over the world. And yes, of course, we're spiritual. We're not all like, you know, drunken gamblers staggering around Fremont Street. I mean, you know, give me a break. All right. So anybody else got any input on that? Don't move here. We're full. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's so welcoming. We we love her. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's, she thinks there's enough people here. We do have a lot. Honestly, for such a small place, we do have quite a lot of people here. You the know. traffic is so bad <laughs> here now. It's becoming L.A. Yeah, it's not nowhere near L.A. Good Lord. No. No. Or New York City either, by the, by the way. Um, all right. So, you know, Touch of Magic. Where did the heck did that name come from? Well, honestly, I found the domain and I thought, wow, what a cool name. And I bought it like a while ago. And then I really thought about what that means. Like... People, a lot of times people just want a little bit of that kind of energy where they feel like they're empowered. They just need that little doorway to open for them, that little touch, that little bit. And then they take it as far as you wanna go. So the word magic um, puts a lot of different ideas, I think, in a lot of people's heads, right? Um, mm -hmm. And some people will talk about what David Copperfield, and we're in Vegas, Siegfried and Roy, aw. Well, he's gone. One of them are gone now, right? Roy, has he passed away? But um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's what, you know, Vegas thinks of magic like that. But 
Um, and that's stage magic, and that's a lot of fun. But there's also magic with a K, right? So, and then even Lori Cabot, she's got magic with a J, M-A-J-I-C-K. So, I mean, there's different ways, but I, and there's definitely magic with the, with the K and the J are, are similar. Obviously, they're occult-type magics, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I did notice a lot of people fighting over the spelling. Have you guys noticed that? I have noticed that, and I noticed people use them interchangeably. And there, although there are like written down meanings, I don't think anybody actually abides by that personally. Right. I mean, listen. Here's the deal: the K got added by um, some occultist in the old. What was his name? Agrippa. I think is one of the uh, yeah. one one of the oldest uh, uh, called six, in the 1600s that first used uh, magic with a K. Don't hold me to it. I'm no scholar. I'm a you know happy little witch doing my happy little witch show. So, but I believe that's his name. And um, and I know Crowley kind of brought that back into um, repopularized it right when he started working on his uh, Thelema. <laughs> and high magic, right? So the reason that he did this was because uh, he wanted to be able to differentiate between stage magic and occult magic, because it's not the same thing, because there's a, an element of sleight of hand with the magic with a, a, without the K, right? And this was not like, you know, some kind of trick. This is something that was very real. Wait, the right. magic the tricks? I'm just kidding. Magic, well, like a mad, stage magic, you know? <laughs> magic tricks, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so that's why he did that. He did that to differentiate between it. Um, but I know people get really heated over it, like seriously heated over that, whether it it's stupid. You don't need the K there, or you know, if you don't use the K, you're not really doing magic. And honestly, it's all semantics. I mean, the bottom line is this: I use the K. I put the K. That's the way it was when I was coming up and I was reading about it there was always a K at the end honestly it it makes sense to differentiate between the two types of magic and you know and I can't even think about doing it with a J I love Lori Cabot she's like one of the most people who've had the most influence on me from when I started the first time I saw her on like Donahue when I was a little kid in the 90s or you know teenager or whatever I was 80s Whatever the heck. I don't even know what year it is, guys. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, back in the day. And, I, you know, and I was like, wow, she is like the coolest thing on the planet. But the J thing, I don't know if I could remember to do that. But I think there's a numerological reason that she does it. Uh, yeah. Um, from what I understand, it was, um, it, it works out to be the number two, which is like a primary number in magic. And that's why they wanted it to be that way. Yeah. So that's from my understanding. And it was mostly like Salem witches that they, where that comes from. Yeah. But that's, um, that's probably the, the most unused version though of the spelling of magic that I've seen. But uh, definitely there was some reason behind changing it to that. Yeah. Well, I think honestly, yeah. numerologically makes sense. I think it's kind of interesting don't like though why people would get like so up in arms about it because there's so many different aspects of like the craft where we will kind of change the spelling of things to make it a little bit more magical or a little bit different. And we see it a lot with like, um, like the spelling of Wicca or Witta and all the different variations of that. So I think sometimes you could prop like maybe if you want to do your own numerology thing, come up with your own spelling of magic, put a Y in there or something, see what that adds up to. Right. So I think it's kind of fun to play with, yeah. but I do appreciate the differentiation between the stage magic and the ritual magic, because when you go to research something and look it up, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating. It's like, no, I want to, I want to see like, like real spiritual practices, not someone doing card tricks. Like <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, you know, especially, I think people look for things to fight about. I, I think that people just look for things Definitely. to like argue about. I'm like, I don't know if I'm old or whatever, but I have no time for that. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, I'm too busy trying to just do the magic. I don't care how the hell you're spelling it. You know what I mean? Does it I matter? I definitely think it's a silly thing to argue about. 
I it agree. does not matter. I agree. Not, at least in my opinion, it does not matter. Yeah. I, don't I, don't I personally don't like the J because it looks silly to me. It looked like magic. Like you're saying it like. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. aggressive. You know, I think honestly, you've got to just live your life the way you want to. And if you want a, a K or no K or a J, that's your personal preference. Maybe don't jump down other people's throats about it. All yeah, right. So, well, I mentioned Aleister Crowley and we all know who Crowley is, right? I mean, he's right. one of the oh, most, yeah. yeah. Based off my most, intro. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, one of the most well-known and influential figures in magic even today, right? And he founded right. the religion, religion of Thelema. Um, mm -hmm. He's written a lot of books and a lot of people even say that he helped Gerald Gardner write the Book of Shadows. That's a point of tension mm -hmm. between a lot of witches. But apparently, you know, if you look at Thelema and you look at the ceremonial aspects of it and the amalgamation of that into modern Wiccan practice, you can't deny that there is definitely similarity there. Um, and, you know, also with, with Masonic orders and stuff like that. So. Um, I think he definitely knew Gardner, and I'm sure that whether or not he was physically there writing it with him, I'm sure he had an influence. There, It's an obvious influence in it. What do you guys think of that? Um, if he didn't help write it, there's definitely a large influence just from him absorbing his information and kind of having it have input in his. I, I definitely agree that there's some kind of connection there right so yeah and I, i've always found it kind of interesting how there's so much of what is found in wicca that is kind of like i don't want to say introductory but it's kind of like some common principles between some of these organizations that alistair probably was connected with so it's like there's too many similarities and overlaps so obviously there was some kind of common source or influencing of each other yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you really look at the the whole um, modern Wiccan, now some, like, like, let's not get into the whole, okay, so some witches do not want to be called Wiccan, but I'm talking about mm -hmm. the religion of witchcraft that was founded by Gerald Gardner, which now we call Wicca, which is never was called Wicca back then, but it is now. There's a whole debate about that, and we're not doing that. We're talking about magic, and we're talking about Crowley. So, and nobody jumped down my throat over that either. And I'm going to miss I dare you, Marissa. I, I know. dare you. Yo, you don't know. I hear some people, <laughs> people get like totally mental. I'm like, please don't get mental on me. I'm just, I'm just trying to talk here, right? Assuming so, stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, it's definitely something not to get super mad about. I mean, I know, so I do know plenty of witches that don't want to be referred to as Wiccan, and I will probably fall into that too, but I would never get angry about it. It's an easy thing to, you know. Think. Right. I, I mean, I think, honestly, people think all witchcraft is is Wicca, and they're like, oh, you know, Wicca this, Wicca that, and they're, they're not, and they're assuming that all uh, witches are religious witches, which they are not. So I think the, well, we weren't going to talk about the word witch today, but I mean, the word witch is, it's got such a wide um, and diverse meaning now. You can't really, it used to be that a specific person was a witch that followed a specific tradition and a specific path. It was just different. Now, people who read cards call themselves witches and they're not even doing magic which i'm not saying that's bad or good i'm just stating how it is <laughs> let's move on because that's I, another I like, hot topic <laughs> i like that the word witch has like a mysterious feel to it because like when people when you when people ask you like if you're a witch or not and it's kind of like oh you're a witch and then they're like they're kind of like mysterious and they're like oh what do you do or what do you believe in because my always go to when they ask me that is like oh you're a witch what do you believe in i just go the devil and then they just run away and I'm just don't the, spread that the end of that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, I mean, most people when they hear the word either witch or magic, right? They they're thinking what? Satan worshipers, people who don't know, people who are not involved in paganism or the occult in any way. That is their go to. That's what yeah. they think automatically. Right. You know, you're devil worshiper. And I've spent a lot of time uh trying to disassociate from that, that because I do believe that they, I don't like to argue a lot with a lot of people but it's something that I will stick my foot down about that 
just because someone says they're a witch or is involved in, you know, magical practices does not mean they're worshiping the devil. <laughs> no, yeah. absolutely well, not. And I had, a, I had a funny experience in high school because my, one of my best friends in high school, she was very devout Christian and she was doing a research project for one of her classes on the religion of Wicca in particular. And that's what I was studying at the time. So she wanted me to kind of like, I guess, kind of share some of what I had learned with her. And she was kind of, we were joking with each other and she was talking about the afterlife. And I was telling her about Summerland and how that's kind of like a common thing amongst like the Wiccan tradition is that, you know, after you die, you go into like a Summerland area and you kind of spend your time there and review your life and stuff. And she goes, Oh, so Summerland. So I guess it's going to be hot there. And I was like, <laughs> you are terrible. <laughs> but it that's was funny. it was funny. That's, she was a good friend. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. That's really funny. Yeah, people definitely have a lot of preconceived notions about those hot topic words, uh, magic, you know, witch, witchcraft. And there's not much you can do except maybe do like a podcast and try to talk about it. And maybe somebody will hear it who had the wrong idea and realize we're not all, you know, sacrificing children or, you know, worshiping <laughs> Satan. Or, you know. So many times, every time I tell my dad, oh, I'm going to go hang out with my witch friend. He's over there like, well, what do you guys do? You guys sacrifice your children? And I'm just like, yeah, dad. Yep. That, that's exactly oh what God. we're doing. Liz, I, I love children than some of the Christ more more than some of the Christians I know. I am so oh. I love kids so much. I mean, like honestly, and I'm not you know not comparing. Well, I just did. Well, with, uh, what it I, was all what I did. That's what I did. I'm owning it. <laughs> That's okay. Give your true opinion. There like let go. people know. <laughs> Right. It was also really funny because around Thanksgiving, my dad's like, what did witches do on Thanksgiving? I'm like, we sacrificed a turkey just like everybody else. <laughs> exactly. I always told my mom, You're, you guys are late on the game. We already had Thanksgiving for Quickens, you know? <laughs> all right. So, all right, magic. Let's get back to magic, guys. So what is magic? What like what do you guys? What's your opinion? T t somebody take it. What do you think magic is? What your your opinion or your perception? Not opinion, perception of what magic is. Uh, my personal perception is that you're using natural elements to affect something and change it in a certain way. And so when you do a spell or you do a ceremony, you are you know pulling in different energies to get the outcome that you desire that would be what i would consider magic all right who else got something on that well what i consider magic is a lot of people always say like oh that's weird or that's like that's different or whatever but like i always just tell them i'm like honestly to me it's just a different way of praying like people don't think praying is weird people say i pray for you and stuff all the time but you know they never really think that praying weird but for some reason when you put magic and or witchcraft they think it's weird but i'm just like praying is honestly just putting your intention into something and i just think magic is kind of the same way but you have your own way of doing it so i that's what i think it is all right what about you zach you yeah. got any words of wisdom that's a good point well, i would agree with miranda that it's about just kind of like having intention with everything that you do and because in and magic, magic encompasses a lot of things. Magic is ritual, it's spellcraft, but it's also our daily practice of, you know, being thankful. And whenever we stir our coffee in the morning, if we're putting intentions into our coffee, it's like everything that we do is magic. So life is magic and you kind of, magic is a neutral energy. It's a neutral substance that we all work with, whether we're aware of it or not. And we all just have mm -hmm. kind of like, different terms for it and so i think even if you don't practice magic per se you are still kind of manifesting and creating your own reality in your own way through whatever belief system that you have so it's like i'm doing magic you're doing magic we just have different terminologies and belief systems yeah. of how it works and operates 
It's just right. so funny that when like, people say things like, I'll pray for you or stuff like that. But then for us, we'll be like, we'll do a spell for you. And people are just like, whoa, wait a minute. What are you doing? You know, and it's like, to all the guys. I, do think, <laughs> I think prayer is just trying to manifest, you know, the outcome. So I, it's, I think in a lot of ways, different religions do practice magic without, you know, realize, well, at least in my opinion, realizing what they're doing, like when they, burn a candle to a certain de- uh, deity or saint or whatever i consider that um magic without really realizing you're doing it i guess right so it, for me magic is absolutely um the ability to uh manipulate and shift energy and that's what that's mm-hmm. that's my idea of what magic is i think it's more than intention i think it's more than a wish that's for me it's something Mm -hmm. actually where you can create that tangible change and if you look at even crowley's definition of magic magic is the science and art of causing change in conformity with will now what's your will definitely your will is not what you wish for your will is not what you just Mm -hmm. want your will is that divine energy within yourself that you are able to kind of gather together pull and push out now a lot of people will utilize their will and they will absolutely um, have a religious connection where they are utilizing their own will in connection with a god or a goddess, with ancestors, with elemental energies, um, with just the energy of the universe around you. And if you're looking at it as we are part of the energy of everything around us, that ability to take, manipulate, shift, and shape is our birthright. It is, it is not something that we have to like pray or beg for. It is something that we have a right uh-huh. to connect with, create and make because we're products of- I am on board with you. <laughs> yeah, we're the products of what we think. We're the products of what we, what we are manifesting by our every breath and our breath is energy. We're shifting it, exactly. we're changing it, we're moving it, whether it's and- good or bad. Well, sometimes I'm I still- am completely- in agreement with you well sometimes i personally sometimes since i'm kind of, i'm still kind of new to it all i'm still skeptical of it so sometimes my question that i ask myself all the time is when i do a spell or magic or pray or whatever you want to call it and i do get what i want is it really the magic or is it like a coincidence or like what people tend to do is that when they do something and they want something and they think that something's going to happen, it would be kind of like a placebo effect where you start looking for the answers and everything that relates to what you did. So it's like, is it really the magic or is it, are you just Does looking it, for the answers well, and things? Maybe your shift in perception is the magic. Exactly. Maybe. And maybe. Uh, it relates back <laughs> to like the, like the age old hermetic principle of um, as above, so below, and learning about the different planes of reality. And the first plane that you have to master is the mental plane. Once you master the mental plane, then you can start to manifest things on the physical plane and really, you know, create the life it is that you you want. But I think a lot of people, they are manifesting things from their subconscious mind and they don't even realize it. And so it's like they keep they, they realize they don't realize that they're these awesome manifestors and it's like they keep thinking the wrong way and so it manifests the lifestyle that they don't really want and so that's why that's the first principle is you have to master your own mind and your own thoughts in order to establish like dominance over your physical domain that's true because i feel like like when i used to go through when i used to have really bad depression and I would be like in a negative mindset all the time. It's like, it seems like everything would go wrong all the time. And it seems like I've noticed that when I'm more positive, more positive things happen. So it's like, is that really manifesting or is that just a change of mindset? Like you don't know, so. Well, it's energy. You gotta remember like attracts like. So if your energy is vibrating higher, you're gonna attract a higher level of energy to you. You know, the law of attraction is very simplistic if you look at it in the most basic form that it was presented to everybody back in the day. Like, every, you know, if you just wish it and want it, it's gonna to come to you. But I mean, that's obviously way too simple, right? It's an actual shift in the energy that you're putting out because you're gonna attract that energy back, right? 
if you are always in a mind, I can never find this, I can never have that, I can never do this, you can never do magic. It's not going to work. You have to come mm -hmm. from the place where you can, you will. You, it's a positive place. It's not a negative place. And if you're in that negative place, I wouldn't do magic anyway because you're going to attract ne negative stuff to yourself. So Period. my question to that is, why do they always say, oh, good thing or bad things always happen to good people? So it's like if that's, someone's that's, good, and why does bad things always happen to them? Well, bad things happen to everybody. Bad well, things happen to crappy people. Bad right. things happen to good people. Bad things happen <laughs> to everybody. That's life. You're not going to live your life in a bubble where nothing's ever going to bad's going to happen. But if you're vibrating and living in a certain way, less bad things are going to happen. And when they do happen, it will not be that bad things haven't happened. You're just looking at it differently. You're realizing, oh, I can change this. I can shift this. I can make this better. So bad yeah. shit's going to happen. And it happens to everybody. And that's the stupidest said. That makes me so annoyed when I hear that. Good, bad things always happen to good yeah. people. Bad things happen to everybody. To shitty people have bad things happen too. Excuse the French, my loves. Right. No, and your mindset doesn't, doesn't make you a good or a bad person. Your actions do. So if saying, you know, why do you bad things happen to good people, that person might be a good, but their thinking or thought process might be pretty negative for all we know. So that would kind of not really work in that scenario. Yeah. What do you think about that, Zach? Bad things happen to good people. I mean, I, I agree with you, Marissa. I think, you know, bad things happen to everyone. That's just a part of, you know, going through life on this plane. It's, we all have the ups and the downs. And I, I understand like kind of getting stuck in that negative mindset because I've struggled with like depression and anxiety on my path. And there's a thematic proverb that I'm always kind of reminded of. And I'm not going to quote it exactly, but it's the, it's something about don't, don't get too comfortable whenever the sisters of fate are smiling on you because they are quick to frown and, and cry and the, you know, don't drown in those tears because just as quickly as they change to storms, they can change back into shining smiles. So it's like you have to ride the ups and the downs. And a lot of what spiritual practice teaches us is how to remain centered when the world is around us seems to be going to extremes. Agreed. So. Agreed. The centering is yeah. the most, that's the most valuable lesson. So mm -hmm. I, everybody who's watching, you're going to notice this group is like, we've got gen x we've got millennials we've got gen y we've even maybe got a gen z or two i don't know <laughs> is there a z <laughs> i don't even know but i thought it's great to have everybody's opinion from different kind of time frames and being the older one in this uh -huh. group right here and to say the most important thing i've ever learned in my life is to to roll with the punches and realize that every bad thing is going to be as bad as you make it I remember being young and thinking it was the end of the world. And once I found magic and witchcraft, I'm like, oh, I don't have to live and dwell in this shit. I can actually fix it. I can change it. So I don't have to be a victim. Life life isn't victimizing mm -hmm. me anymore. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, where, you know, sometimes we feel like that. Why is bad things always happen to me and blah, 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 blah. You know what? I'm going to pull out my cards. I'm going to see what's going on. I'm going to shift the energy when I can. And what you find after time, though, is once you're living your life in a certain way and that magical energy is around you, less bad things happen. Like, well, and just to, just just to bounce off of that, it's like when I grew up in a, um, in a private, or the private, I went to private Christian school for a little while, but it was non denominational Christian. That's what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. And whenever, like, bad things would happen like i would often hear that phrase of like you know bad things always happen to good people and you know sometimes it just wasn't in god's plan and it's like everyone just kind of like oh you know just take it you know just like if life's screwing you over just take it you know and i'm like pray harder and it didn't always sit right with me and so like you're saying like when i found magic like i felt empowered like i felt like i was taking back control over my life which in the Christian church, you don't do that because God's in the driver's seat. Yeah, Jesus takes <laughs> Which, the wheel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I, I've learned kind of on, I think some of, like some of the early Christian traditions, like, like there was a lot of kind of like, you know, God helps those who help themselves and things like that. 
I think some of that may have been lost in the particular congregation that I was at, but I hear a lot of that in the Christian community. And whenever I went into like the Wiccan community and the more magical community, there was still some of that with people thinking that they were getting cursed and hexed all the time, but there was less of that. Um, it was more about taking responsibility for your actions and taking responsibility for your thoughts and making sure that you were being a productive part of your community and you were taking care of yourself so that you could be there for your family and the friends that needed you. So it was very much about taking responsibility of yourself rather than saying, I don't know what the hell is happening. You know, God, please help me send me a miracle or send me something and yeah. I'll just keep doing what I was always doing and hoping for something different to happen, which Albert Einstein said, that's the definition of insanity. Right. So Was that Einstein okay. or Franklin, Benjamin Franklin? Who said? I thought it was Einstein. I think it's Maybe. Einstein. But it could be wrong. Is it Einstein? Well, I'm probably wrong because. Well, either way, it's a great quote. It's a great quote. It's a great <laughs> quote. <laughs> well, anyway. I just, I just still think like sometimes like, if you have a lot of bad stuff happen to you and then suddenly you like look at your magic or you do a spell or you pray or whatever and things start getting better and you start thinking like like Zach said, you take responsibility and you start changing and stuff. Like I said before, is it, is it really the magic? Is it really the witchcraft or is it just a change of mindset? Like, well, well, but so what is what is witchcraft? If you're not doing if you're not doing witchcraft from a religious perspective, Let's say you're not somebody dealing with gods or goddesses. What else would it be but a shift of energy? And could not a shift of energy be a shift of perception? That's what I'm saying. Like if you're yeah. if you're not looking at magic from a, a religious standpoint, where you're not dealing with ancestors, you're not dealing with gods, you're it's the will of the witch, right? Just strictly your energy, your will, your connection, right? So you're shifting how couldn't that be what the magic is? The ability to see outside of that small confined space you were in, the ability to see the possibilities of something good out of something negative, to create and manifest that by a shift of your consciousness. Just something to throw out there. Yeah. I'm not saying what it yeah. is or it isn't. What I'm saying is you got to look at it, what it could be, right? So if you're not looking at it from a well, religion, when I did my, go ahead, honey. Sorry. No, no, no. Go no ahead. So I was just saying how I was, um, how. I, my explanation of magic was energy. So I definitely think that is magic. If you can shift the energies into a different place, that's magic. So I, I'm I'm 100% on board with that explanation personally. Yeah. I mean, our brain waves are, are electric, electric impulses, which is energy, right? We've got right. neurons firing off and all of our nerve endings firing off. It's energy. It's yeah. energy. And I think... I think what we forget a lot of the times is that even though it may seem like only a very small act of magic to us, that little act of magic, it does have like a ripple effect and it builds on it. Like every act of magic that you do, it builds on it. Like you, you increase your kind of belief in yourself and your own empowerment. And I think that's incredibly powerful, especially if you, you know, like if you have family and, you know, you're passing your DNA on to people, there's memory that's encoded in your dna and i'm like i'm a very firm believer that the way that our brain works is partially kind of our own thought patterns kind of make certain neuro pathways that stimulate different parts of the brain which make us feel certain ways but some of that is also inherited from all of our ancestors because of the thought patterns and the experiences that they had so whenever we do something to kind of reprogram and kind of put ourselves on a more positive path where we're able to manifest things that are more comfortable for us rather than things that are more uncomfortable for us, then I think that's like incredibly valuable. And so all those little acts of magic, we need to uh, remember yeah. they're important. And whatever you want oh, to call the, the reason that I was saying that we need to say they're so important is, um, in the, the book, The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruiz, he, in the beginning of the book, he was talking about how our mind is a lot like a garden and how the soil that's there, it's kind of nourished with all of the plants that we've already mentally grown and like all of those thought that, thoughts that we've had and they've passed. And like, that's what is kind of nourishing that soil. 
So those little positive seeds that you start to plant at first, they're not going to sprout, you know, very well because they're not in the proper soil. But the more of those seeds that you plant, the more of those nutrients get in the soil and the easier it'll be for future positive seeds to kind of grow. So even if it seems like it might be just a, you know, you might doubt the match for a little bit, like believe in it and it gets stronger and stronger. Right. I mean, and you know what, that's a really, I mean, it's a rational thing to think, wow, is this magic or is this, you know, a coincidence? But how many times does a coincidence happen and then it can't be a coincidence anymore? Because by the nature of what a coincidence is, how many coincidences could there be in a row? How many times could it be you've done this and this is the outcome? I mean, if you want to talk scientifically, I think that's the grounds for a hypothesis that magic works. Because if I mm -hmm. do A, right? and B always happens, then mm -hmm. guess what? A must be a valid way of doing things because B always happens if I want to get to B. You, you got what I'm so, saying? Is that too obscure, yeah. but yeah. So what happens if you do a magic or you pray or whatever and you don't get what you want? So I, I don't like it when people pray or when you do a spell or whatever and you don't get what you want. People always tend to have like reasons or excuses, I guess you would call it, of like, oh, it wasn't meant to be, or I didn't do the spell right, or whatever, instead of just questioning, like, maybe well, it doesn't really exist, or something. If it's, the will, if it's the will of the witch or the magician, or is your will always the same all the time? Or maybe you didn't want it as bad as you thought you did. Maybe it's that. Maybe. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's not that it didn't work because you didn't, you didn't do the spell right. Because honestly, you don't need a million candles and a bunch of herbs and some fancy words to do a spell what you need to do is build energy with an intent and your will and send it out that's what though that other stuff helps people because we're human beings connect to the energy and if you're somebody who believes that those items hold energy then you're going to be utilizing that energy. And if you're dealing with gods and goddesses, you're going to use those to show honor to those gods and goddesses in the works and acts of magic. But mm -hmm. if it's just your divine will and what you want to see happen, it doesn't work because you didn't want it enough. You did not manifest it. You did not make it work. But yeah, it's not going to work every time. And here's the thing. There's a lot of people who walk around saying everybody can do magic everybody can do this and yes can you do a certain level of magic yes but is everybody have mm -hmm. the will and the energy level and the ability to congregate that energy level and send it out into the universe in the same way i don't think everybody no. can just do that out of the box i think some people naturally are able to kind of tap into it and it's easier just like people who can play basketball or play piano or sing and they're just naturally good at it right some people are naturally able mm -hmm. to tap into that other people can learn to do that right so if you have somebody who's naturally like if i tried to sing opera right now you guys would be like completely sad okay it would not be good it would be a terrible thing right but yeah you know it's not my gift and i probably couldn't even train myself to sing opera okay could I do it like just to do it? Yeah. Like if you look at magic like that, that's why I don't think that it's it's fair to tell everybody that we're all on the same playing field when it comes to certain things because we're not. Just like we're not with anything. Right. Yeah. This well, is crazy to me because I literally had a very similar conversation about how it's just a natural thing, although and I, and I compared it to singing or dancing. Like you could probably teach me a dance, but I am not a naturally gifted dancer. And I I did, I compared, compared it in the exact same way. So it's like freaking me out a little bit that we're on like the same length. I feel like we're on the same field. page yeah. a lot. I see your posts online. <laughs> oh, yep. Anyway, so let's move on. Let's get back onto our, our magic topics because I actually wanted to talk about something really interesting like so people there's like two main types of magic right so there's ceremonial magic right and then there's folk magic you guys folk magic is they call it low magic which annoys me i hate i hate that terminology calling it <laughs> low magic it, but yeah. that's yeah it's uh it's what some people call it 
it's more natural magic it's cultural in nature and even here in america we have some of the um folk magic practices uh hoodoo is one of them conjure mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, and root work right mm -hmm. so and that's a type of definitely um a practice that's more down south than anywhere else Right. Mm -hmm. You're from South Carolina, right, uh, Zach? Isn't there yeah. a lot of hoodoo and conjure down there? Yes, we uh, I'm from the low country where the, the Gola people are, are most prevalent. So it's yeah, there's there's some of it, but there's there's a lot of churches, too. So you yeah. gotta balance. <laughs> yeah, balance it out. Well, I mean, a lot of them actually utilize the Psalms yes. as part of it. And they don't they and a, most of them would not consider themselves witches either. They wouldn't yeah. say the word witch because they are Christians. They just do their work. They they do their, you know, their workings, right? Is that what they call them workings, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Their yes. workings. And, and, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to cut in because I know that whenever I've mentioned it before, people always, because it sounds similar, related to voodoo. And even though they sound the same, they have nothing to do with each other. They have nothing to do with each other. Absolutely nothing to do. They're very, very different. And then in America, we also have something called powwow. You know mm -hmm. what powwow is in Pennsylvania? Um, mm -hmm. And that, it sounds Native American, but it's actually from Pennsylvania, Dutch country. And um, and actually, it, author Silver Ravenwolf brought that into the, um, into, the, into the world a little more prevalently, I think, when she wrote her first book and talked about it. And she actually wrote a book called Hexcraft back in the 90s or late 90s, I believe something I, I lose track of time guys if i say a time check everything i say if there's a date attached because i can't remember how long ago it was i'm getting too old for that but i know i still anyway. think it's 2019 <laughs> oh like i think it's 19 freaking 82 sometimes not good <laughs> anyway so yeah so that's a that's an interesting thing and they make all of those cool hex symbols now the hex symbols are not like hexes where you're putting a curse on somebody they're actually uh, symbols that you ever see. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Pennsylvania and you see like the symbols over the doors of their barns and stuff. Mm -hmm. And those are to bring good luck and, you know, protect them from evil. And the powwow people will heal you. And, and they are also do not consider themselves witches, at least back in the day they didn't. I, I mean, now a lot of people are more comfortable with that word, but they didn't call themselves that. And they, there's a lot of religious angel work and stuff like that that goes into that and then when and then the next type of magic that is the most common is ceremonial magic right mm -hmm. and they call that high magic and it's you know elaborate rituals structured um very there's a hierarchy you know and uh, and actually when it first really started you would only find people in the upper class doing um any kind of high magic you, you, you people with money, educated people, people who were able to study the occult. I've, right? call, I've heard it called elitist magic quite a bit. <laughs> um, you know, I got to be honest with you. There's a lot of people who are involved with, um, who could consider themselves occultists, who mm -hmm. definitely look down mm -hmm. on people. I've even heard a few people talking about, like putting down people who call themselves pagans, calling them names and saying like pagans are stupid and fat and like, then like reality well no like no not even like a christian would say it but like uh, th saying it like that they're lower than them like they're magical yeah. people but they're lower than them they're not as you know upscale and i hate that i mean i think honestly i i love the word occultist but i am not an elitist and i'm absolutely never been a snob mm -hmm. to people i you know i think everybody no matter where your background is or where you're from or how much money you have in the bank that is not your value your value is something bigger than that so all right so okay. I, i'm not but I'm, i don't want to put down all cer ceremonial magicians or people who practice that type of magic because they're not all like that i've just heard a lot of that and i guess sky has heard that too mm -hmm. um they with the elitism <laughs> yeah. and stuff well, like that I, and i can understand a little bit why it might seem like elitist and stuff if if you're kind of on the outside and you're just looking in and you're just like okay but why do i have to have a robe made of that particular material and a cord that, of that particular length and all of these tools and that's all not of, the problem like, that's, that's not the problem. like there's too much that's, stuff involved and it's like well it's like you have to have you have to have access to 
the money to buy it or the materials to make it. Right. And if you are going to make it, that's there's like traditional ways of making it. And they usually, it's like, there's so many different rules around it, especially like if you get in, I, I was watching a documentary on Masonic practices and they were talking about the different outfits and uh, all the different pieces that they had to have. And if you didn't show up with your briefcase, then you weren't getting let into meeting because you had to be in full ritual gear and it's like there's there's so much involved and a lot of what what i've seen in kind of like that high ritual magic is there's a lot of um kind of like reinforcing um different mythologies and different kind of like storylines that are kind of like sacred to like how the practice yeah. works and so it's a lot about understanding like cycles of life and how to work through different phases of life and things like that and so kind of like becoming a master builder of your own reality but what i see a lot more of in folk magic is okay i need to get something really quickly i need something now and this is what i have access to i'm going to put these things together because these energies are similar to the energy that I want to attract. And so I'm gonna throw this together really quickly, however I can, put my energy into it as best I can, and you know, my magic will happen. So it's like two very different, I think, intentions behind kind of how the practice is developed. If that makes yeah. any sense? Yeah, it does. But see, I don't think they're elitist because they're wearing robes or they're celebrating ritual that way. The elitism is from the people themselves who feel like their practice is exactly. above other people's practice and that their magic is stronger than other people's magic. And yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of that on podcasts and videos and people. I, I would honestly that's question That's exactly what I was trying to say. Okay. Well, I, I'd say I'd honestly question the depth of their, their faith because I've seen, like in the Christian church, I've seen people who are like, oh, well, magic, like witches aren't real only the power of God has power over anything. And because, you know, my religion is best and they can be kind of elitist in that terms. And they'll like hide particular teachings if you haven't been with the church long enough or things like that. But the people who actually do their own devotional work and do their own communication with spirit and do their own communication with God, they're the most open-minded and understanding and down to earth. And they're like, yeah, like God, like not masculine, not feminine, like doesn't really care about, <laughs> it's like the people who actually do their own spiritual work tend to be the ones who are open-minded. And I think the ones who are elitist are stuck in a book maybe and not having a true one-on-one -on -one spiritual connection. Well, so that's you know, I got to be honest. Years. Yeah, that's that. And you know what? I wish that was my experience. I've just experienced people who they, they're only, they're, they think their tradition is the only tradition. They think uh, their I way think. of magic is mm -hmm. their only magic. And that if you're not mm -hmm. initiated into their tradition or their group or their hierarchy, that you're not even valid. You're not even the same thing as they are. Exactly. Yeah, that's where <laughs> that's the viewpoint I was coming from too. It was more it wasn't so much the actual ceremony, but the people themselves that think that they're somehow better because they do something in a different way. And that's where my issue with it was coming from. Because I actually really think that, you know, ceremony male magic is beautiful. It is beautiful. I don't like the attitudes of some of the people in the community but it's not everybody and i definitely am not saying that <laughs> you know i'm going to say this i mean there's a lot of different even in witchcraft you know traditions i mean i honestly had really looked into the alexandrian tradition and was going to start training except i found out that i have to be naked a lot and i'm just i'm not that person i'm sorry i cannot get naked in front of my friends and then just be like hey what's up next time i see them <laughs> or get naked in front of my people who are like in my group i just can't do it i want and i love this the, the ritual of it i love the spirituality of it and i've studied mm -hmm. so many different type traditions of witchcraft and i really wanted to do it but i'm sorry i can't there was, I knew that I would get to the end of the road and not be able to get naked at the initiation. Right. 
And I'm like, I'm not going to do all this training and not be able to actually follow through with it. I just couldn't do it. And there was, even if I lost a hundred pounds, I still wouldn't be able to do it because I am, I grew up Catholic and guess what? All I could picture is my Nana going, Virgonia, but shame on you. you could put your underwear on. <laughs> I can't, I can't deal with it. So I get it. You know, you know? Though, I'm, I'm the same way. I can never do that. <laughs> I mean, but and so, it's, it's uh, fine. But I also want to make another, uh, just a point. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to make a point that, that is, uh, in other religions, though, I mean, it's the same way where there's different, like, sects of that religion, like Christianity, for instance, and they're like, no, my way of Christianity is the right way of oh, Christianity. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the way that you're doing it is wrong because they, they interpreted the book in a different way. So it's it's just something that happens with people with anything, I would think. But yeah. So, I mean, here's the thing. The difference between high magic and low magic, to me, is the way you do it. Like, what, how you're getting your end result. Like, either you're doing it in a very simplistic, natural way, a very easy, sympathetic, magical way, or you're doing an entire elaborate ritual to... And, and, you know, the way that they're doing it is obviously very different, too. I mean, they're if conjuring spirits, conjuring demons, conjuring all sorts of energies that most folk magicians wouldn't even dream of dealing with, right? So anyway, so moving on. Let's, let's get on to white magic and black magic and gray magic. Okay. So magic doesn't have a color. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Because when I saw that, I was like... <laughs> yeah did you, it's I, all well, about your what you're doing with it <laughs> absolutely so it's magic gets categorized sometimes into categories right so white magic is supposed to be what so white magic is all of the good stuff and love spells and health stuff right and black yeah. magic is uh i curse you and stick you in a jar and now you're gonna sit there for <laughs> I was thinking a coffin box that's why i get so angry when i watch those tv shows like I'm probably going to get attacked for this, but Ghost Adventures and stuff where the, the host is always like, oh, we're going to bring in an evil witch and she's going to do some black magic to conjure up some demons. I'm just like, shut up. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it's completely ridiculous, first of all. I just, I can't deal with it because I'm like, first of all, why would you have to quantify it by black, white, gray, anyway, right? So, but I know that even back when I first started really exploring my magical path um you know I was around 20 years old I would say and uh and I had just come out of Catholicism and I still was kind of one foot in one foot here you know um and I had to say I'm a white witch I had to like that was something that I felt was important people to know because I was still stuck in that Judeo-Christian mindset I was still stuck in that place where the devil was a real thing and I did not want to do the devil's work, right? And and that and that honestly is mm -hmm. where a lot of people come from, I think, when they're trying to justify their journey forward. So anybody who's listening to this and you are new and you are scared, there is no devil, okay? There you go. <laughs> don't have to worry about doing the devil's work because there is no devil well there are there are witches that do worship the devil though i they have were, found that <laughs> well they worship lucifer yeah who's actually a fallen angel exactly so wait <laughs> number one and and um yeah and that's not the typical that they're using that as like a deity a deity yeah. deity whatever you want to call it um i, anyway. I just get I just get so annoyed when people automatically assume like, oh, you're a white witch. Does that mean you don't like the black witches or you don't like the black magic? And they always assume like we're at war with each other, like freaking Captain America Civil War type <laughs> shit going on or some. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's funny. It's That's Lord of the funny. Rings over here with Sauron versus Gandalf type shit. Well, in some countries and cultures, it is like I there's um there's been a few like when i was in las vegas there was um there was a particular group of people i'd always have people they were like oh my cousin is back in the home country and she's cursing me because such and such happened at this family reunion and it's like like their family's cousin cousins were cursing each other and it was just like a common thing and i heard it from multiple oh, families yeah. and it was like there would be like a good witch in the family and then there'd be a whole bunch of other people that like they were training and then they went sideways and i'm like well this is interesting so i guess well, in some cultures it is common but most often in in the circles that i'm familiar with it's 
it's not much of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, here's the thing. If I do something negative to somebody, let's say, so I'm a witch. I do magic, right? If I do something that is harmful, it is not black magic. I have done magic and my intent and will was harmful. The magic itself was just doing what I told it to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, there's a line in the craft, uh, Lirio. She, they're in the witchcraft store, right? Uh, and, you know, everybody who came into witchcraft when they were in the 90s, you know, saw the craft and turned them on to that. But she says, true magic isn't e black or white. It's both. Because nature is both cruel and loving, right? And that's magic is natural, right? It was one of my favorite quotes about it because magic, honestly, and I know it's from a, a fictional movie, but that's a true story. Magic isn't black or white. It is the will of the witch. It's the will of the magician. Let's say magician, because this isn't about witchcraft. This is about magic, right? The will of the magician. You're transforming the energy with your will and you are creating something. Now it can be a good thing or it could be a bad thing, you know? You, that's up that's up to you now if you believe in the rule of three if you believe in karma if you believe it's going to come back to you that's a different thing right but if you're talking about the pure essence of what magic is it has no agenda there is no agenda tied to the energy you give the energy an agenda magic can only be what you make it anybody want to disagree agree have something to add let's do it well, I really don't... agree. I think it's all about your intention when you're doing it. The magic itself is just there. It's you're you're the one doing it. So there is no. I cause that, so when when you when we were showing like the talking you know points, I was like no. I was hoping that we weren't gonna actually sit here and define each one. No, I, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm no, no. Well, I think it's funny is the definitions for what's black and what's white magic is it changes depending upon what society and you're in and what time period you're in, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, Christians will say it's all black magic. So there you go. You know, well, a lot I, of religions. I know a lot of people would probably argue like when it comes to magic or when it comes to anything, there's no such thing as good and evil. If you have your own morals and you're doing what you think is right, then does that necessarily mean that you're evil or you're good? It's just what you believe. Here's the thing. There's universal things that are like probably shunned, <laughs> you know, murder, stealing, you know, screwing your best friend's wife, probably not things you should do in life just because it's crappy, right? But does it make you an evil person? That is all perception. And your reality yeah. is based on perception. So in some, you know, some places, if it's a do or die situation, soldiers kill people. Are they evil? No. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. it, yeah, everything is subject to interpretation. Magic is the same. The last thing I wanted to touch base on on an episode about magic is some of the traditions that use magic, just throw them out there. So Wicca and witchcraft incorporate magic, right? Voodoo, Palo Mayamba. <laughs> Santeria, Strega, anybody else have any other ones that use magic that are uh, magical traditions or paths? Kristen? Kristen, they don't know they're using magic. It doesn't count. <laughs> that just, they I, are. That just irritates but me. they I'm, are. I'm sorry to the Kristens and Catholics they do prayer and whatever circles, out there. circles, okay? They literally make circles. I so, know, yeah. but... Or like when they're doing the wine, the body and the blood of Christ. Oh, and then yeah, they, yeah. Like, that's... Okay, so, so how about this? Catholic Church, you go in and you light a candle. I, I'm wishing for something, mm -hmm. and then you say your little, I go over, you light the candle, little kid, light a candle, and they let us touch fire then. It wasn't just the quarters with the lights, you know, <laughs> light the candle, and you're praying, please, Jesus, please, Mary, please, all of you saints staring at me. That's witchcraft. <laughs> Absolutely, and then you wonder why yes. the Catholics are freaking pagans now. Anyway, mm -hmm. so so what are different so, oh, drinking ahead. the body of Jesus or whatever they do? Yeah, <laughs> that's the, 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 yeah, that's what I was saying. That's so the ritual magic. Ritual. <laughs> yeah. that's, it's exactly, that's all it is. It's a purification ritual. Yeah, yeah, the result of your sins. Uh, but uh, <laughs> as, as far as other traditions go, uh, you've got like the Rosicrucian order and the Thelemaic tradition that branched off with Alistair yeah. Crowley, and yeah. then you've got um, uh, Golden Dawn. There's the yeah. 
Um, then there's the order of the bards, Ovids, and Druids, the who's Druids. kind of like a neo pagan, yeah. neo the neo pagan um, Druidic group. And let's talk about types of magic. So different types of magic, as far as like what kind of things do people do with magic? So banishing magic, protective magic. Okay. You know, uh, invocation. So what's an invocation? Invocation means that you're taking in the energy of a god or goddess or, you know, or an evocation where you're just calling them and saying, hey, come chill. You're not bringing them inside. You're just bringing them around you. Uh, consecrations, right? Blessings. And then you can do this like with candles, sympathetic magic, right? So you're doing acting out a whole ritual or whatever. Uh, petition magic, charms, sigils, no means an inclusive list. What you guys got? Any other different types that I'm forgetting? Well, I, I just throw in like elemental magic. I mean, that's like, yeah, that's where a lot of it comes from. A lot of that synthetic magic originated from just working with the different trees and the yeah. plants that were out there. Abs and absolutely. like some of the oldest like wishing traditions are like that go back to Aphrodite. And it's like, you just write it on a seashell that you find on the beach and then throw it back out to the beach and let the waves take it away to Aphrodite. Right. Absolutely. And I mean, even the, the most primitive form oh, of nice. I like that. It's beautiful. Uh, the most primitive form of sympathetic magic was, you know, back when people lived in caves and stuff, right? So they would go out for the hunt. But before they did, what would they do? They'd gather around a fire. Somebody would dress up with the head of some other beast that they had killed, right? And they would act out the act of a successful hunt, right? Because they're trying to set that energy. They're trying to please the gods, right? So they act it out so that when they go out and actually do it, that they're going to bring that energy to themselves. So, you know, sympathetic magic is the most commonly, I think, commonly used types of magic. All right. So what do you guys think? Our first episode. I hope you stick with us. We got another uh, another bunch of beautiful ones planned out. We'll have different hosts. You'll see some of these faces you'll see some different faces and you're going to see my face all the time. Get used to it. And um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to be the magic because you are the magic. And that is a fact. So uh, we'll catch you guys next time. And we hope you enjoyed our banter and give us a chance to get a little better at our banter and we're going to move forward. So check you later. You guys want to say bye? Bye. All bye, right. Guys. All right, Thank let me know. just... <laughs>